Right. Thank you. So that was my next question, right? Because you see, Navic has been around for some years. And when I talk to our friends in industry, which um, you're also aware, the adoption of Navic has been facing challenges. And, you know, many people talk about it being non-reliable um, and, you know, it's not easy to adapt. So what do you think the, con you know, the country is doing, the government is doing to encourage more applications, more users, uh, so that adoption becomes widespread than what it is now? What is the government has done in terms of uh, policy change is that first road transport, all your yellow board vehicles supposed to have a Navig based receiver and that receiver should put, give out a position to a server maintained by the government. So that is order is there. It is supposed to be implemented from 1st April 2018. For various reasons, it has been pended or delayed or they have given additional time. That's one thing. As I was talking about the navigation in inside uh, 5G and 6G, our team, as part of our team means our country, people who are working in this 5G sector and 6G sector have formulated, have participated in the 3GPP meetings, and then we have arrived at a positioning which can be given by Navic. This is the second part of it. Next is our you know, airways, that is aviation industry. I've been told that you should use Navic. Government has told them. That's another thing. See, the government of India has taken out a measure to track all railway, railway engines, railway coaches. They're all possible. When you track a train, the dot has to come between two railway tracks. This dot can come only if you use Navic. We have done a study and explained it to the, uh, what is that, submitted to DST, who, and they would have submitted to the railways. Uh, we have done a survey in Bangalore, suburban tracks, where we gone on a suburban train and shown that if you use Navic, that uh, dot is coming inside these tracks. If you use GPS, it can go to the next track also. So that's a major thing. And uh, uh, so government has now promulgated that everything should get tracked. And uh, we are talking, we are hearing Minister of Road Transport who says that there will be pay by use in terms of uh, national highways instead of having toll booths. So we can, wherever we are going, we'll, have, we'll get tracked and then we'll pay whatever route that we are using it. So these are certain measures government of India is taking up. One major thing I want to tell you that uh, people of timing part of it, this gives you very good high accurate timing. See the timing server maintained by ISRO in, uh, in the navigation control center is the most accurate in the world. It's in the order of 10 nanoseconds. It's so stable. As compared to it, whatever GPS is using, it is around 30 nanoseconds. So this difference, you know, when we use GPS-based thing in our telecom circuits, first the coverage is not correct, uh, continuous. Then this, uh, what is the... Uh, High, lower uh, stability makes our what is the calling mechanism generation of frequencies all difficult. Whereas if we use our system, it will be very good. Next is if we use this our own timing, all clocks in every railway platform becomes a master clock and start using same time synchronized to the second. Today, if you see many clocks work differently, though they might have a GPS clock. GPS clock on one platform will be different and another platform will be slightly off the mark. So the synchronizing of all these activities is good. Another thing is that the what is the, if we use this technology properly for monitoring, our wastages will reduce, our output will increase. And overall, the increase will be to the tune of doubling our output will take place because wastage will reduce, efficiency will increase, and our overall output will will double for the same set of resources. So this has been studied by certain sci Australian scientists in Australia for their mining, Dempster and Reeds. I have verified it during my research in IIT Kharagpur. It is also the same in India also. And this augurs well for our agriculture sector, which is a very, very different type of agriculture holding we have, different type of plant cultivation we have, cultivation methods we have. All that can be dovetailed using Navic, smaller holdings are there. When our output, agricultural output can double directly if you use Navic very effectively. That's what. And Navic, let's say effective means, for example, drones flying and then spraying certain pesticide or spraying a, a fertilizer in a field at a targeted locations. It's all possible with Navic, more so because our holdings are smaller. 
instead of large thing where you can the error of 10 meters can be adjusted no problem we can fly a couple of not that way it happens in india india very small plots couple of acres is owned by every individual some individual have less than an acre how do you go and spray it only for a staker and can't get back so there this what navic technology will help and government is supporting huge way they're supporting in drone industry they made a drone it's compulsory for drones to use navic for navigation that's a policy that they brought in like this government of india is pushing in various formats and uh, only public have to understand its benefit and start working or accepting it luckily the see moment with any new technology comes in the hardware to be placed and then to be ready when people want it luckily in our case we have the processor required and we are ready to give to anyone who asks that number of processor we are stocking 10000 number at any point in time in our company we are manufacturing it directly it comes from the factory to us because it's our own processor with our, with our own trade name and then we are marketing it directly to anyone who wants it so first i'm talking about government measures huge number of measures that are coming next is how this have been you know certain challenges are there how we are overcoming it as part of our own effort company's effort thank you uh, that brings the next question to you colonel veran is about the institutional role so the question is about the role of institutions in some of the challenges that uh, you know you mentioned one of them is the genesis based road pricing uh, you know as of now even the consultants that are employed are from abroad which means we don't have a technology to do it internally what is the institutional role i just gave one example but there are many challenges what are the institutions doing today are you also involved in some of this research give us a couple of examples so that the students the community that is listening in they can benefit from this thank you yeah see the government of india when uh, iit tirupati tih is a very good example government of india is motivating us to put up a world class uh, facility where these technologies can be further propagated and we can do adequate number of research yes lot of research is required when gps was created a lot of research was done for about a decade before it became acceptable by people and many new fun- new applications were discovered by these people same thing is required in india we have researchers who are working in a deep way in, in india itself and uh, like we are with many uh, what is the education institutions like iit tirupati we are with ramaya institute we are with uh, uh similarly many colleges universities deemed universities students from there are coming to us to do project work and to learn the subjects same thing in part of iit tirupati also we are encouraging students as part of our atal uh, initiative where we can directly fund give them some amount of money while they when they are working along in this in this domain they have to apply to it and take it i think more of it you are, you are got first hand information about hackathon and other things the students can benefit they should just contact us and we can explain to them in a big way thank you so much uh, for answering all the queries so far as a closing remark colonel velen uh, if you could share with us uh, some of the you know the opportunities that exists for student community and as well as entrepreneurs and um, any any other you know inputs that you would like to share that will be helpful for the audience thank you yeah see yeah, entrepreneurs first thing this industry alone they have quantified already around this 200 billion dollar industry industry around navic and core navic industry it has been quantified our core space industry has been quantified as 44 billion dollar in india itself this report has been made uh, by in space and is available out of this 44 billion dollar around 50% will come to nav- navigation in bandi navigation core and navigation core applications so that gives huge opportunity opportunities for entrepreneurs to get into this domain and uh, find innovative means to use our our navigation system to give a better solutions for indian systems a uh, couple of initiatives where they can directly jump on is the digital twin project of dot which is happening now they can uh, use it and showcase their platforms every government is asking for different uh, what is a for people to come forward and demonstrate their capabilities we have certain uh, research funding given up like through tdf 
and people yeah, entrepreneurs can make use of uh, the uh, what is the production linked incentives design linked incentives the government is giving with all this you can get into this what is the this spectrum of or the niche segment of uh, what navigation in india so i think i've covered everything and uh, thank you thank you so thank much colonel vedan thank you thank and you. so i would like to close this particular podcast by saying uh, this series of podcasts have been planned with um, you know industry veterans also with um, entrepreneurs like colonel vedan uh, it's run up to a round table that we're going to have in a few weeks that is on navic and related challenges and opportunities so this is it's a kind of a curtain riser for that event so all of this questions you know and challenges we cannot answer on a 30 minute podcast please come to the event and interact with us network with us i think um, many of those questions that are lingering in your mind uh, where to go what to find you know you get answers thank you so much for listening in Yes, I invite one and all for the round table, and then uh, it'll be nice meeting you all. We'll be there personally, guiding you, helping you.